Good morning. My name is JJ, a senior civil engineer with over 10 years of civil engineering experience. I have a master's degree in civil engineering from the ABC University in any country. For today's interview, I will focus on two key projects I worked on. The first one is the super commercial real estate project. And the second one is the mixed use development project. I will use these two projects to highlight my approach to solving engineering challenges and demonstrate my professional competence in the ICE attributes. The first project, the super commercial real estate project, is a commercial property located in the Zone C industrial estate in any city. I worked as a senior structural engineer with JK Construction. The project comprises two commercial towers rising from a six-story podium with an overall height of 200 meters. In this role, I was responsible for overseeing the schematic and detailed design of the superstructures. I determined the structural form during the preliminary design stage. I organized a meeting with the architects and electrical and mechanical design team to discuss the architectural and structural schemes. Using the building layout, I identified the usage of each area and referred to the code of practice for dead and imposed load 2011 to determine the live and dead loads. In accordance with design specifications, my structural design incorporated a combination of core walls and shear walls for the upper residential floors, effectively resisting lateral wind forces. For the podium levels, I employed a frame structure with mega columns to meet the architectural requirements for large spans and open spaces. To ensure structural integrity and load distribution between the residential and podium levels, I utilized transfer plates for connection. The first engineering challenge I encountered was how to address the connection between the existing depot and the upper level podium. The layout of beams and columns in the existing depot below could not accommodate the architectural needs of the upper levels, and this had the potential to cause discontinuities in the vertical load-bearing system of the building. To tackle this issue, I proposed implementing a double transfer plate system. Transfer plates provide a mechanism for redirecting gravity loads when a vertical supporting member is interrupted. By employing this method, I not only ensured the architectural design requirements of the upper level podium, but also guaranteed that the gravity loads from the upper structure did not exceed the preserved loading from the existing depot. I achieved secondary loading distribution through the lower transfer plates while maintaining the preserved loading from the existing depot. I employed ETABS structural engineering software and SADS models for the project's modeling and structural analysis. Using the ETABS model, I conducted a comprehensive lateral wind load analysis considering all main beams. This involved calculating wind loading based on wind tunnel test results and examining two principal axes 
and evaluating 24 wind cases for each direction. Using ETAPS model, I was able to calculate the moment, shear force for each member, and the overall displacement of the building. This analysis provided me with a clear understanding of how wind forces were distributed across the structural elements, ensuring an efficient and effective design. Furthermore, I utilized the SADS model to gather dead and live load data for the structure and performed element design for slab beams, columns, and walls. The mixed-use development project spans 8,200 square meters and features a total construction floor area of 48,280 square meters. It includes a four-story podium and a 30-story residential block. As the technically competent person for this project, I was involved in planning and supervising construction works checking for non-conformities in both permanent and temporary works. I also led design and build items. The major challenge I encountered on this project was that the eastern side of the site had a vehicular access and I was instructed to ensure that that access was open for 24 hours during the day to allow fire trucks to pass through. However, a permanent cantilevered structure located directly above this 24-hour access posed significant constraints on site. Additionally, there were potential safety hazards during construction period in the form of falling debris. To address these challenges, I proposed a hoarding design. The hoarding served two purposes. First, it acted as a temporary working platform, and second, it provided adequate protection for the roadway below. I fixed the hoarding to the footing and first floor structure and designed it to withstand wind load and construction load. I performed analysis of the main steel frame using SAP 2000 software. From previous experience, I know that the duration of construction period has a huge impact on project cost. If the duration is too long, higher costs will result due to inflation and increased management costs. If the duration is too short, work will more likely be performed at an unreasonable pace and at the expense of quality. To enhance overall efficiency within a reasonable period, I established two principles. The first was to avoid uneconomic labor peaks, and the second was to maximize use of large panel formwork. Also, by subdividing the site into two zones based on concrete volume and formwork arrangements, I calculated the precise concrete quantities needed for each wing and implemented a 10-hour workday over a six-day cycle. I oversaw the storage of precast elements to avoid potential delays and ensured a continuous workflow. To improve operations further, I designed a construction joint that efficiently used steel formwork panels. Working on both projects, 
I performed activities that ensured high standards of health, safety, and welfare. On the super commercial real estate project, I inspected temporary works and requested risk assessments from contractors to verify that construction loads were within safe limits. I also ensured that disposal practices complied with the company environmental standards. For the mixed use development project, I was actively involved in weekly safety walkdowns and meetings. During these sessions, I thoroughly inspected equipment by checking the lifting hooks and inspecting the integrity of fences and hoarding to prevent damage during construction activities. Additionally, I ensured good housekeeping practices were maintained and instructed subcontractors to provide sufficient drinking water and hand washing facilities. I also gathered feedback from workers to make necessary adjustments, ensuring the work environment was safe and clean and workers were satisfied. To align with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, I implemented several sustainable measures during design and construction phases. For example, during the design phase, I introduced concrete mixes with 30% pulverized fly ash to replace cement, and this significantly enhanced the concrete's durability and reduced CO2 emissions by approximately 30%. Also, by performing wind tunnel tests, I was able to optimize building design by cutting the need for reinforced concrete by 20%. During the construction phase, I focused on soil management plan to reduce the waste disposal and promote on-site material use and reuse. This reduced transportation needs in addition, I implemented energy saving initiatives like the installation of occupancy sensors and timers in site offices and the use of renewable energy vehicles. These practices not only minimize environmental impact, but also enhance sustainability in construction. I am committed to professionalism. Throughout my career, I have recognized the importance of continual learning and professional development beyond the scope of my job responsibilities. I have completed several technical training programs and attended a wide range of seminars. For instance, I watched the ICE presidential address for 2024 online, making me realize that as an engineer, my career path must be constantly reviewed, analyzed, and adjusted. Thank you very much for listening, and I am happy to answer your questions.